Hey guys, welcome. Welcome back to Artistic License, my stream on Thursday where we do a little bit of whatever I want. And today we're going to be playing some more Final Fantasy X, but before we get to that, hey guys, how are you doing? Welcome in, Katie. I hope everybody had a very nice 4th of July. Um, we did on Saturday. We cooked out a little bit. Yes, I totally rearranged my set. Hey Mochi, how's it going? Yeah, do y'all like it? What do y'all think? It, You know, I saw that Landon was redoing her office, you know, since her move, and I just got so inspired. I was like, you know what? I've had the same background for too long. I need to change it up. So I flipped everything around. So this is the other side of the room. Um, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I hope y'all like that. Um, oh, sweet. I'm so glad to hear that, Mochi. Yeah, we had a good fourth. We had, um, we had some barbecue on Saturday. And people would set off fireworks, of course. And then on a Sunday, that was actually the 4th, we had birria tacos, which is a Mexican dish, which I think is wonderful. We had a Mexican dish on 4th of July. You know, why should we not? And then um, people set off a lot more fireworks than on Sunday, and the dog was very scared. But <laughs> she survived. She's okay. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mochi. Thank you. you think it looks more professional? I do think it looks more like a streamer background, a little less like a YouTuber background. You know what I mean? And I am moving more towards streaming. So, yes, appropriate. I'm glad you said that because I feel like it's a little, it's appropriate. Okay. All right. You guys know we have a new meme that we do. So we're starting off our streams with a little personality quiz. So here's the personality quiz we're going to do today. I'm just going to copy this for you all right here so you guys can do it. Two, um, which Tumblr character stereotype are you? I'll be excited every time you have a new whiteboard message. Uh, when, when the camera's small like this, can you all read the whiteboard message? I'm a little bit curious. Okay. Because um, I don't know if it's really legible except when the webcam's big. I, I'm unsure. Okay, well, let's do this quiz. So let's say hypothetically that you are a part of a medium that Tumblr adores. With becoming a famous character, there will be something about you that makes Tumblr go wild, positively or negatively. Okay, let's find out what it is. I picked this one. Um, I liked the question, then I clicked on it and saw the background looked like Tumblr, and I said, oh, well, I have to do this one. You know what I mean? Okay. Oh, and you were just watching the Mary Sue video? Oh my God, how appropriate, Katie, how appropriate. <laughs> All right. Um, you're a character in the newest sweeping movie slash cartoon on Tumblr. Who are you? The protagonist, the protagonist foil, the love interest, the recurring antagonist, the true antagonist, whoa, or the ally. Um, I would say I always, I always strive my hardest to be the protagonist of my life. So we're going to go with the protagonist. I don't know if anyone would make a piece of media about my life, um, but I try to be the prota protagonist all the time. So that's what we're going to mark. All right. What is this show about? Is it about a magical school where the protags get super cool magics and fight evil together? Oh, I do like that. Um, people get powers with worldly exposition segments between talking. Oh, oh, wow. Um, cool sci-fi story about intergalactic conflict. Hmm. Uh, something based off the pre-existing philosophy or cultural thing, but made cool, I guess. <laughs> uh, fantasy. <laughs> Uh, I feel like I would pick fantasy if they were saying more about it, but they're not really just as fantasy, right? So we're going to go with the magic school. That seems up my alley. All right. Aside from the general feel of the show, what's the actual plot? Some prophecy has to be fulfilled, else evil will prevail or something. Group of modern teens gets transported into another dimension world. I do love me a good isekai. I'm not going to lie. Um, everyone is gifted with a certain special ability that they must use to defeat the villain. Oh, I like that too. Um, generic mag magic school and chosen one, but different TM. <laughs> uh, everyone's gifted with a certain special ability and they must use that to defeat the villain. We have to go with that because I love me some Saturday morning cartoons and that's kind of how those are structured, right? Who's the villain? Kid whose parents were killed by direct ancestors of the protagonist. <gasps> oh no. Generic bad guy dictator, someone very angry, someone in the protagonist's group, but we won't tell you who it is until the end. Oh no, plot twist. Um, it's me, I'm the villain. No, we're going to go with this one. Uh, it's definitely someone in the group, but you won't find out until the end of season six. Okay. What's the big twist in the show? There is no prophecy. The villain was never actually the bad guy, just forced to be one. Oh, that's so me. Uh, the true villain is the adults forcing their kids into dangerous situations. Oh! <gasps> When will a show ever admit? Okay. The true villain is the quiet kid in your group. The one who was thought to be the chosen one isn't actually. It's someone different. Those two mentor figures, they're dating. 
<laughs> one of the characters is a child of the teacher slash mentor. Okay, this isn't really much of a twist, but this definitely happens. Like, let's be real. Um, this, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna be real and we're gonna be meta and we're gonna comment on on this on this. The the true villain is the adults forcing the kids into dangerous situations. Okay. Is there romance? Yes, lots of it. I don't even have to read the rest of them. I'm going to, though. Yes, but it isn't central to the plot. It's implied for everyone, implied for the gay relationships, but explicit between those who got no chemistry. <laughs> oh, they're just calling out the CW right there. Okay. No, only the implied ones here and there. No romance here. Yes, lots of it. Lots of romance. The attempted Zuko. <gasps> okay, here we go. Um, you were a villain once, but thanks to the power of amateur counseling and second chances, you're the good guy now. And Tumblr loves that. Except the fringe group that thinks that your redemption was pointless. <laughs> I don't know if that really fits me, but I absolutely love this answer because, you know, I love that character. I love the villain with the redemption arc, okay? It started with Vegeta when I was a kid, and it has not stopped since then. This is the best character archetype, and I will stand this character forever. Second chances for everyone, okay? Real. Yeah, the subtle call were super fantastic in this one. Okay, everybody um, that's in the chat right now, y'all do this quiz and uh, tell me what you got. And as people join into the stream, um, I will share it again. Okay, oh, here's Katie's answer. Okay, the fire starter. Ooh, okay. You were the Vriska secret of the show. Did I say that right? I don't know what show that's from. Okay. You have people both fighting for you and against you because of the plethora of factors in your character, your backstory, your actions, your personality. Everyone always argues over you, but remember, you also got a plethora of die hard stands. I've seen Adventure Time, but I don't remember. Vriska Serket. I don't remember that. Um... But, uh, but that's good. Oh, I love the description there. That's very, that's very Tumblr uh, character archetype, is it not? Tumblr loves that type. <laughs> all right, y'all. All right, y'all. So that's the quiz. Okay, let me switch over to our game here. Okay. We'll turn up the volume. And look at the levels. Looks like y'all can hear the the little dee -dee -dee -dee, the music and probably still hear me. So let me know if I'm wrong on that, but the levels look good. Okay. Turn on our controller. Okay, there we go. And y'all can see now. All right, just like we have been for this um, Celestial Weapons section of Final Fantasy, we're going to start with a Blitzball game. And it's going to be a league game. Um, for whatever reason, I can I can do the league games decently, but I cannot win the actual tournament where I need to get the attack reels. So, okay, let's see how this goes. We're going to go against the Killica Beasts. I don't foresee us to have any issues with this, but we shall find out. We shall find out. Does he have a better... Does he have better than Venom Shot? No, he does not just yet. Okay. Okay, and Jasu, I think, still has no text. Yes, he has no text. Okay. And those are good for Yuma. Okay. Let's see. Let's get that. Let's get him some... Walker really needs to get Sphere Shot. That would be very useful. So he can help a lot more with, um... With shooting. With shooting! Let's get her Wither Tackle. Jasu... Uh, let's get him Drain Tackle. Yuma, any skills for you? Yes, let's get her Drain Tackle, too. Alright. Proceed. Let's play some Blitz Ball. I don't think we've played um, this uh, the Killica Beasts on stream at this point. So I think this is the first time y'all will see this team. They're not very good, so I have some confidence <laughs> that we're actually going to do very well uh, this game, but we'll find out. Rin loses a tech. That's not cool. How does that happen? Rin has lots of techs, though, so it's probably okay. Okay. All right. 
Let's break and then shoot. We'll do a sphere shot since we're not going to have anybody in front of us. Sphere shot's great because it raises your shoot to really, really high. So that's why I want to try to get it for Waka. Um, it's really, really good tech for your guys that are going to actually be shooting the goals. Very useful. But yeah, these guys are kind of like the other crappy team. If y'all remember back from when this, when we were, you know, in the plot part of playing Blitzball. Um, these guys were the favored underdog to win. They, they, they don't end up winning. It's not what happens, right? But they're the favored underdog to win because Sin had just recently attacked Kilika. And, uh, you know, there had been major tragedy there. Lots of people had died. I don't know why you tried to shoot. Yeah, that was definitely what was going to happen. Like, and this is, this really proves that this game is all about the numbers and stats because... Like, it, these guys, it's very hard for them to beat me at the level that I am right now. It's, like, almost impossible. Their stats are just too low. So hopefully I'm not going to eat my words saying that. But, um, yeah. That's what's most likely. Okay. Yes, we're going to break. And let's go ahead. Let's just dribble. This music, the Blitzball music is so hype. Alright, I don't know if he can make this shot, but we're gonna try. Let's see. Yeah, I didn't think so. He had too many people against him. That's okay, because I really don't think that the beasts can get a shot on Yuma. I'm pretty sure my goalie can block anything that they would dish out. Oh my gosh, so many. Okay, so now we're going to eject shot. Since we've got some defenders. Katie, Mochi, anyone else in the chat? What did y'all do for the 4th if you celebrate? If you don't celebrate, then um, I, I'm sure you just had a perfectly normal, regular old weekend. <laughs> But if you do celebrate, what did y'all do for the 4th this past weekend? Did you shoot off some, some boom booms? Do you have some good food? I made, uh, my dishes were, I made, um, a banana pudding. Which the recipe was like the best banana pudding ever, and I'm not gonna lie, it was. And then I made some, um, loaded potato salad, which is really just potato salad. And then you add in chopped up bacon and green onion and cheese. Had a barbecue party with the fam. That sounds perfect, Katie. That's exactly the kind of fourth I like. You know, I love food. I love eating. Barbecue party with the fam. That's what I want to do every weekend, really. You know what I mean? That's like the life. Um, I had some cupcakes. Oh, I love cupcakes. Because I love cake and miniature things. And so cupcakes are the best. Okay, let's do a venom shot. I don't think this is going to happen. Oh, well, it got their goalie poisoned anyway. Copious amounts of frosting, no apologies. And you shouldn't apologize. You know what's the best is going to those cupcake places and getting like, you know, the overpriced $4 single cupcakes. And it's the best because here's, here's like the best thing to do, right? Because they always have way too much frosting. But this is awesome because you just cut the cupcake in half, right? So if the cupcake's standing up like this, you just cut it in half across this way. So then you have, and then you take a bunch of the, um, and then you take a bunch of the frosting and you put it on the other part. So you basically get like two cupcakes. It's the best. But I love, I love cake and I love cupcakes. Um, a dessert that I make pretty regularly is um yeah let's do a venom shot again um a dessert that i make pretty regularly is called uh uh trace leches cupcakes is trace leches cake which is a mexican cake it's funny you keep mentioning mexican food today and um but i make a cupcake form and essentially what this is is you make this sauce for the cake that's like milk and sweetened condensed milk and um 
something else. It's called Trace Leches. It's three milks. I can't remember what the other milk is. But anyways, so you make this this so sweet milky sauce, basically. And then you poke holes in your cake, and then you pour it all over. So you get this, like, really delicious, like, wet cake. And it's amazing. Oh, he did lose the tech. Oh, that's so annoying. Let's give him good morning. Okay. Done. <laughs> Isn't it? It's a good idea, Katie. So you end up getting feeling like you got two cupcakes out of the situation, um, where norm where you had one in the before. Okay, those are all still good marks. Yes, let's proceed. Damn, now I want cake. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Katie. I would tell you I'd make you a cake, but I don't know how to get it through the internet. I can try to push it through the tubes. Um, for you, but I just feel like the lolcats will probably eat it before it gets to you. Um, but I'll try. You know, I do have some, uh, stuff to make mug cake in there, so I can make a, a little mug cake for you. And then I'll try to push it through the internet tubes. We'll do that after stream. Man, I like playing the Killika Beast way better, because I've got two goals, and I'm like, there's no way they're gonna get three goals in just the second half. So, like, I feel so relaxed and cool. <laughs> I have cake mix. I'll make some cake tomorrow and tell myself it's from Karen. Ah, oh, yes, Katie, yes. I love that. You don't have to say it's from me, though. I just gave you the idea. You you put the effort in and made the cake. Ideas are free. Ideas are easy, right? But you put in the work. <laughs> i probably make some mug cake after stream, I think. So I can have a little personal cake, you know. Oh, let me tell y'all also the recipe that I how, that I used for the banana pudding. So basically what this recipe called for... Oh, good job, Ren. Basically what this recipe called for is you, you still kind of make vanilla pudding, but instead of following the directions exactly as they are, um, what you end up doing is you put like milk and sweetened condensed milk into it... Um, and then kind of make that make the pudding like that and then you add in a tub of whip topping right of cool whip basically and you mix that up and y'all it makes like the lightest fluffiest pudding i've ever had i'm always gonna make like if i have to make pudding for like a party or something i'm always gonna make it like that from now on no more of this um nonsense of just making the pudding mix and putting stuff in it you know i'm gonna make it like that and then of course since it's banana pudding you add a whole bunch of bananas and vanilla wafers so, you know, how that goes. But it was really, really good. It was really, really good. I think I'm going to make it that way next time. The only kind of drawback is that because you're using a whole tub of the whipped topping, it makes like a ridiculous fuck ton of pudding. <laughs> so even though we ate on it for like four days, we still didn't finish it all. We had to throw some away. Um, the bananas just got too old and gross. So, um, <laughs> just word of warning, if you make it this way, you need to be bringing it to like an army of people because you will make way too much pudding, more than your just immediate family could ever eat. <laughs> Minus the bananas. Oh, do you not like bananas, Katie? Or are you one of those people with a banana allergy? I don't mind bananas. They're not like my first choice of things, but they're okay. They're not bad. I don't hate them. You know, they are what they are. Just banana flavor is not my first choice, you know? But I do not dislike. They are okay. Ah, oh, four people. Oh my gosh. Alright, let's try to do a jack shot. I don't think I'm going to make it with this many people blocking me. Ah, oh, well, the first one. There we go. I eat Mexican rice with banana. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. You know what's the best? At like, I guess the Mexican restaurants down here don't tend to have it. I mean, sometimes they do, but not always. But the Brazilian restaurants and like a lot of other um, South American kind of food restaurants here will have it. Um, the fried plantains. Oh my God. Those things are so good. It's like little fry, little sweet bananas. Mm. Oh my gosh. I want to go fry up a banana with some fried plantains. Because that is delicious. Exactly. Fried plantains are the best. Heck yeah. Big agree. Alright. 
We only got like less than a minute left. Yeah, there's no way. There's no way I can lose. Let's just pass the ball around as much as we can. Titus's pass is awful though, so probably not gonna be able to pass it. They're probably gonna catch it. Poor Titus. He is a um <laughs> he is a a star player. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> The pantaloons get me. I hate them and love them on the characters. Yeah. <laughs> I un I don't understand the pantaloons part of their uniform. It's like that would create so much drag. You would think that it would be just awful trying to play something like Blitzball with those pants. But um, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, maybe that's the secret. Maybe that's why the Aurochs did so bad for so long. Um, they're stupid pants. <laughs> What's up, Bree? You don't have to stay in here, it's fine. You can go. Okay. Alright, so I've gotten three wins. Current team level is one, so I'm still number one. Okay, let's go back. Alright, so you can go, it's fine, Ree. I don't know, I don't know what her issue is. She's crying about something. Alright, so I know I said we would do some stuff on the Meehan High Road, but I lied. I changed my mind. After after that stream, I changed my mind. We're actually gonna go to the Thunder Plains. The final showdown. Yeah, here we go. What do you want, Reed? Do you want out? Like the door's open. It's not closed. You can go out. It's okay. The door's open. You don't have to stay in here. You want some water? Here, I'll bring you your water. Here we go. Here's your water. I don't know what she wants, y'all. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, okay. All right. So first we have this book here. This is an original copy of A History of Summoners, Thunder Plains Edition. Let's read it. Long ago, fiends known as cactuars roamed the Jose continent freely. They ran rampant, ravaging fields and tormenting travelers. Then Lord Gondorf appeared, a man later to become High Summoner. He scoured the continent for cactars and drove them to the plains. Once he'd gathered the cactars together, Lord Gondorf linked, them, linked the sign of X, whereupon the cactars turned to smoke and were absorbed by a stone. The cactars were thus sealed into stone, fated to face lightning day and night. Until someone again links the X sign and releases the seal, they shall suffer within the stone for, stone for their deeds. Thus did Lord Gondorf bring relief to people all over Spira. He believed that the battle with Sin was only one part of a summoner's great mission. So if y'all remember last time we were in the Thunder Plains, I did actually um, press X on some of those cactar stones and, uh, and we got to fight some cactars. We're gonna actually finish up what that started here, but, very, but first we are going to do um, one of the most difficult mini games in this entire game so i'm excited to show you all that because i have a mod that we're going to try out um and i will explain it to you when we get closer okay so we're still doing monster catching of course so i gotta mark off as we're doing it so that's a larva and that is a gold element okay all right Oren, you have lightning on your sword so that's a bad idea let's put waka in instead back on the field that's right all right, so got those two captured. Good job, guys. Good job. Okay, so here comes the lightning again. <laughs> All right, we've got a little alcove we're going to go to down here. And then we will get started with that. Okay, so this is another gold element. And then we've got, what is this guy called? A boar? Captured. And then this last one is... What's the raptor type called here? Mel Melusine, I guess. Melusine. Melusine. Whichever way, I don't know. There we go. Captured all those. You like that? So there's this little alcove over to the side here that we're trying to get to. And once we get there, well, oh, ha, wait, there's an orange sphere first. Actually, let's watch this scene first. 
Oh, it's a jet sphere this time. Okay, let's see what the boys got up to when they were in the Thunder Plains. Jack got struck. <laughs> All right. Let's continue on to our little alcove down here. As hey, how's it going? Okay, the reason why we're coming down here is because there is a mini game in this game to get the Venus Sigil, which is part of creating Lulu's Celestial Weapon, and you have to dodge 200 lightning bolts. Well, it is not just 200 lightning bolts, it's 200 consecutive lightning bolts. So I have a mod that's going to help us do this. So actually, let's fight these guys first, and then we'll set up the mod. So this is a gold element. A boar. Gotta mark these off for my capturing. And then we've also got Melusine. Ow, kitty cat. That's your claws. Come here. Oh my gosh. The cats are getting so heavy, they try to climb up my leg and it actually hurts now. <gasps> okay. Alright. So I'm actually gonna use my PC level cheats to turn encounters off real quick. So if you press F3 twice, you can turn off encounters. There's a spot that you can stand here where the lightning strikes continuously. So I'm going to take a second to find that spot. It's something like, like this. Give it a second. See if that happens. So if I can get that right spot, then we can use the mod. Oh, there we go. Okay, there's the spot. So I'm gonna turn on the mod. Okay, so if I run this, and this is where I got it from, I'm gonna copy the link and paste that into the chat for you guys. So this is where I got the mod from. And if I press page up, then he should automatically dodge all of the lightning bolts. So let's just wait for another one and make sure that he dodges. Make sure this is working. While the kitty cat plays behind my head. What's up, Oreo? <laughs> Be crazy. Come on. I know this spot works. You can get lightning bolts over and over here. Come on. Why is this not working? Okay, let's try walking in again. Come on, I just got struck. I was standing in the spot. The reason why this spot is supposedly so good is you don't even have to turn off encounters. They'll just, you know, they'll just be off. Um, they just won't, things won't attack you here in this little spot, even though you get struck over and over. But it doesn't seem to be striking me. Now let's go back out and run around a little bit. So I still need to verify if the mod is working. Okay, yeah, there it goes. It worked. I did not push the button to dodge. He just did it. Okay, let's try. Okay. So that was two. I'm going to put the controller down. 
Wait for the next one. There we go. Okay, found the spot. Wonderful. So he's going to dodge over and over. I am going to put a 30-minute timer on. There we go. Now we can just chill for 30 minutes, and we don't have to do the agonizing minigame of dodging 200 lightning bolts. This is the most hated, most difficult minigame in this entire game. Basically, what you have to do is not only dodge 200 lightning bolts, you have to dodge them in a row. And this minigame unlocks the Venus Sigil, which is part of putting together Lulu's Celestial Weapon. So in preparation for doing this, I really heavily debated if I was going to actually do the 200 lightning bolt in a row dodge on stream. And I decided, while I want to get it um, for the game, that would be very boring to watch because I definitely couldn't talk and do that at the same time. Like, that's not possible. And even though I have once before in the past done this minigame successfully, uh, it takes a good, like, it would have taken the whole two hour stream because I'm going to mess up sometimes and have to start over, right? So it would have been an entire stream of me doing the dodge over and over and over. And I decided that was very boring and not fun for me or for you. So I started researching, you know, ways to cheese it and mods and things like that. Well, there is a spot um, that's by a crater that's over on the other side of this of uh, this little area where it will strike you frequently so you can get a good rhythm. So that was one thing that people recommended. Um, but then I found some actual mods where people had written scripts for Titus to automatically dodge. And I was like, well, we can test out one of those on stream. That sounds like a fabulous idea. So I found this one. This one was linked on, stream, on uh, Steam. So it's a Steam community post. There's other similar scripts that are linked on Reddit. If you Google for this, you'll find lots of different ways to do it. But they're all basically the same script. So the way that this specific one works is they compiled the script into an exe file for ease of use. So I thought that would be a good one to share. And when you start the script, you just run the exe file and then you press page up to start the script. You press page down to um, stop the script and then you press home to terminate the script. So that's the short keys that you use. Um, now, I did some reading on this and got some tips and essentially what people said is that do not use turbo mode so we're on the pc version which means i can make things go double speed or quadruple speed but what uh, commenter shared is that when you do that the script fails it doesn't work out so we're not doing turbo mode to make this faster because i think that's just going to make it fail based on what i read the other thing that will make the script fail is if you take focus off of the window so if i was to like click on um, slobs right now to type something into the chat to you guys the script would not register anymore and it would fail so essentially the recommended way to use this script is to run it make sure that it's working make sure that it's doing all its things right and then um you know go have dinner or run an errand or <laughs> you know and in about 30 minutes it should finish and you should have the 200 consecutive lightning bolts. So I have set a timer on my phone. It's at 26 minutes now. So when this goes off, we're going to go collect our reward if this all works and it actually lasts. Now I did read some people that said that um, they ran the script and it, it worked all the way until like 100 and something, you know, and then all of a sudden they had one where Titus failed. Um, I can only suspect based on the other things that I read that they they screwed things up such as like they ran it in turbo mode or they took they clicked on another tab while they were what so the game wasn't selected anymore and it caused it to fail right but I don't know maybe it does fail randomly um so that's why we're gonna find out together <laughs> we're gonna find out together so at the end of 30 minutes hopefully it, he will have dodged 200 lightning bolts and um and we'll collect our venus sigil so, while we are waiting on that, what's up, Oreo? You want to say hi to the stream? Oreo clearly wants to say hi to you guys. I don't know who else does this, but I sing songs with, like, the wrong lyrics all the time, and, of course, the animals all have a song. Oreos is like, Oreo, Oreo, and I usually will pick them up, and they do a dance, like, Oreo, Oreo, right? Like, the cat. I'm a kitty cat, and I dance, 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 and I dance, dance, dance. 
He seems pretty chill about being so close to lightning. Yeah, Titus can get um get struck by lightning a bunch of times and he'll be okay. He doesn't seem to mind. It's no big deal for Titus. <laughs> he's just chilling. You know, he's just chilling, living his life, um, getting struck by lightning. It's cool. What's up, Oreo? How's it going? So yeah, I love to do that with these with these kitty cats. Uh, make them do dances with fun songs. So that's what Oreos when I usually sing. Ori Oreo. And then with Lady, I do it to Gangnam style. I'll say, Hey, little lady. <laughs> I love it there in your end credits. Ah, thank you so much, Katie. It's Queen in almost all the end credits, but for the past little bit, of course, I've put kittens, little kittens in the end credits. At some point, we'll go back to having Queen in the end credits, but for right now, it is kittens. It's probably going to be be kittens in um in the July videos. I mean, sorry, in the in the August videos too. The July videos are already in the can. They're going up. I mean, those are basically done. But the August videos might might go back to Queen, but it'll probably be the kittens again. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I do I do love um having the cats in the end credits. I think they're the best and the cutest. I mean, I know that's part of what makes me watch end credits on uh, YouTube videos, even though there's really nothing there for you. <laughs> Um, like that one channel, Knowing Better, I don't know if y'all have ever watched his stuff. He's like a, uh, variety history educational channel. And, um, and, uh, he has his ferret at the end of his videos. I don't know what Queen looks like. Yes, you do, Katie. Queen is the all black kitty cat. She's the all black kitty cat. She's not in here right now. Or I'd show her to you. But yeah, you know who Queen is. She's my black kitty. Who we've had for several years now. Yep. So Queen's the all black one, Oreo is the black and white one, and Lady is the one that's like white and gray, I guess you could say. We also have Ash, who is a gray tabby, but that's my roommate's cat, technically. Um, he picked out Ash, and Ash loves him the most, mostest most, uh, by far. <laughs> so um, that's all of our kitty cats. And then we have Re, our doggy. She's blonde. Y'all know what Re looks like. She's been on stream several times. She's here with me today. She's sleeping by my feet. She loves to sleep under the desk um, or right next to my chair, which actually next to the chair is not so great because it's a rolling chair. And she'll put her head like on the things where the wheels come out. It's very strange. And I give them like, I'm going to roll over you, dog. <laughs> um, but, you know, she just wants to be underfoot. And she's a good old dog like that. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to tell y'all while we're waiting on this, um, I'm really excited about next week's artistic license. So a little preview for you guys. I know I normally talk about it at the end, but I'm going to talk about it a little bit now. Um, next week, I'm going to be playing a game called Eyewear Cleaner 2077. I'm pretty sure that's a, that's what the name is. Um, I keep sometimes calling it Eyeglass Cleaner, but I think it's actually Eyewear Cleaner. Anyway, this is another um, Bez game. So for those of y'all that remember, we played one of Bez's games on stream before. It was that Neopets game um, about the two friends that meet role-playing on Neopets. It's got some really sad parts. It's got some really happy parts. Uh, it's overall a very sweet story that we played together. Uh, to this day, my husband still sometimes will turn to me and go, Mwahaha, because during that stream, it was, it was like a text game and I was reading all the text, you know, like I like to do when the text pops up. And I said that really loudly, apparently, and it made him laugh. <laughs> um, we're going to play another one of Bez's games that they made in response to, um, uh, to, uh, Cyberpunk. Right, so it's like a, it's kind of a response game to cyberpunk. So I'm not sure if that means it's going to be like their take on the cyberpunk genre, or maybe it's like critiquing the current state of the cyberpunk genre. I'm not really too sure what to expect. I've been trying not to spoiler myself too much, but I did download the game and make sure that it ran, and that's what we're going to play next week on stream. So I'm going to do that as a first impressions of that game. Um, I am pretty confident looking at what they've put out so far that there's way more than two hours of content in that game. I might be wrong, but I think that there is. So we're just going to play the first two hours of it so that you guys can get a preview of it. And mm -hmm. um, if it's anywhere close to as good as the Neopets game was, I know, already know I'm going to recommend it to you guys. Thank you so much for the Hydrate Mochi. I will do that. I've been rambling on quite a lot. Yeah, I think people really, um, really liked that one. People do really like when I play the text-based games, I think. It is hard, though. It is hard doing 
that much reading for two hours. I'm not going to lie. What's in the cup? It's water. It's just water. <laughs> um, I'm boring like that. I, I drink, like, vast majority I drink water. In the mornings, I'll drink coffee. But otherwise, I pretty much will just drink water. And sometimes I'll have a Powerade. Y'all have seen me on streams before have a Powerade. That's if I feel like I'm going to get particularly dehydrated. I'll go have one of those because it has, like, electrolytes and stuff in it. But that's basically what I drink. Oh, and seltzers. Al uh, alcohol, right? <laughs> Speaking of alcohol, <laughs> um, in a couple of weeks, I am taking a birthday cruise. Uh, if y'all remember from last year, July is my birthday month. I'm a cancer baby, but just barely. But cusps aren't real, so that's okay. Uh, my birthday is July 22nd, so that week... We're gonna be taking a cruise uh, and I'm really excited about it because it's my first trip that um, since the pandemic started that is not uh, required you know so for the first time since the pandemic started I'm gonna take a trip that's just a vacation it's just for us it's just for fun there's no obligation or anything we have to do on that trip it's not necessary we're just gonna do it for a vacation and y'all I haven't had something like that in 18 months it's been ridiculous uh thank you so much guys yes it's gonna be so epic it's gonna be a fun birthday holiday it's just kind of like uh, you know this pandemic has been so crazy but since we had gotten our um, vaccines it's been a goal of mine to do like an actual you know some kind of vacation trip or something like that and um, we're gonna take a cruise uh, a big reason that we've chosen that as opposed to going somewhere else is because um, Carnival's got some regulations on there where the cruise is going to be 95% vaccinated. So before you board, you have to show your vaccination status, whether you're vaccinated or not. And they're only going to allow 5% of passengers to not be vaccinated. So I assume what that means is that like kids, right, that can't get vaccinated yet, that's probably what's going to make up the five percent that aren't vaccinated i would assume i don't know but that also means there's probably going to be less kiddos on this cruise which will be nice and <laughs> probably also means it won't be at capacity I've, we've been looking at some of the other cruises that have been sailing out this month because they started this month and they've been sailing at like 70 something percent capacity which is still kind of a lot but it's not a hundred percent so hopefully it will be like not super crowded it'll be really nice everybody will be vaccinated so we'll all feel good and safe um, I'm really excited about it. I'm gonna eat some good food. I'm gonna drink some good drinks. And I'm probably gonna mostly stay on the boat. Because <laughs> we're going um, to the Caribbean. And, um, you know, I mean, I've been to the Caribbean a gajillion freaking times. So, I'm really just gonna go to hang out on the boat and to actually take a for real vacation. You know what I mean? And this boat that we're going on has uh, Gigi's, which is... This J J I J I is one of the restaurants that Carnival has. It's uh, it's Asian food basically, and y'all, it is my favorite cruise ship restaurant. It's so good. So that's what we're gonna have on my actual birthday, and it's like haunting me. I can't wait. It's been like two years since I had Gigi's for the first time. <sighs> oh my god, I cannot, I cannot. Like I think about it every day. Every day since we booked this cruise, I've been thinking about when I'm going to get the GGs again. Um, it'll be nice if you get 70% and all the fun with more elbow room. Exactly, Katie. So we shouldn't have to fight for, like, finding spots to sit and things like that. I'm thinking if it's going to be, like, the 70%, you know. I mean, there's still going to be crowds, right? There's still going to be times where it's crowded. Like, I'm sure that first day when they do the Sailor Ray deck party, you know, it's probably going to be crowded up on the Lido deck. But, you know, we don't have to go to the sail away party, right? Like, we don't have to go to the hottest hot spots um, on the cruise ship. And we can still have a really good time. Can't wait to get me a guy's burger that first day. I saw somebody sharing that a lot of the ships going out now also had the confetti cheesecake the first day. So hopefully we can get some confetti cheesecake, too. Oh, I'm so excited. So, so excited. We're going to go to a lot of specialty restaurants. Like, we're going to go to the Gigi's, of course. We're going to go to the Steakhouse. We're going to try to hit up the teppanyaki. 
has been kind of confusing. We made reservations at the teppanyaki for this cruise on one of the nights, but then like the the teppanyaki disappeared from the list of like things that are on this cruise on the website. Although if we go into our stuff, we can still find our reservation. So I don't know if that means like it got all booked up and they just were discouraging people calling about it. Um, or if it's gonna, that one's gonna get canceled, I don't know. So maybe we'll get teppanyaki as well. I'm not 100% sure, we'll find out. We're definitely gonna get GDs and definitely gonna get the steakhouse. I can't remember if this boat has an Italian restaurant or not. If it does, we'll probably get that too. We'll see, we'll see. Do you guys have any um, vacations planned now that uh, we're getting to a point that more and more people are vaccinated? And I don't know, it seems to me like even with the news of this Delta variant, that if you're vaccinated, you're going to be basically protected against that as well. The problem is really that we have significant population that's not vaccinated quite yet, you know, and that's kind of what's creating the variants. At least that's what my understanding from looking at the news. I don't know if that's exactly what's happening. I'm not a scientist. Don't quote me. <laughs> <laughs> but since things are getting to be where people are more and more vaccinated, or at least the people that are going to get vaccinated are basically vaccinated in this country. Let's put it that way. If you're not, there's probably a reason or you're anti-vax. Like that's, if you, if you want to get vaccinated, you probably are at this point, right? So that being said, do y'all have any like trips planned or things like that that you want to do? Um, now that that might be a little bit of a more of a possibility and it's only being kind of going to become more and more of a possibility as time goes on, you know. Like as more and more as more and more countries get vaccinated as well and um you know, we get more and more people in this country even convinced that the vaccine's a good idea. <laughs> um I don't know. It's like so it's so crazy. But I even know some people that were like, "Oh, I don't know, I'm kind of uncomfortable with the vaccine." Um that have changed their mind as they've watched their friends and family get vaccinated and nothing bad happened, you know? And they're like, okay, well, I guess I'll get vaccinated. And they have. Um, so I thought that was kind of interesting. You know, some some people that maybe aren't so aren't like anti-vax, but still like easily scared have now got the vaccine too. At least that I am aware of in my life, you know? So I hope y'all have some fun stuff planned too now that those that's becoming, you know, vaccines are becoming more of a thing. <clears throat> All right, we've got 12 more minutes left on this timer. So hopefully we will be at 200 lightning bolts by then. And I swear, like... I'm so glad that this mod is seems to be working because like <laughs> y'all would have been the most boring stream. I would have just been sitting here silent for like probably two hours as I failed at least three or four times before I got to the 200 lightning bolts. And like, I don't know how I would have done it exactly with a stream set up because the way that I did it before as a kid, right? Excuse me, is turn off like all the lights in the room so that it was super dark, you know, make sure the curtains were closed, all this stuff so that you could see it really well when that white flash comes up right before the lightning because that's like the trigger to know to go ahead and push the button. So that's how I was able to do this, you know, when I was younger beforehand. Um, but like streaming in a dark room, like, I don't know. It would just like, I guess you would you'd see like Shadow Karen. <laughs> Shadow Karen for two hours while I silently push A over and over and over. That's probably what the stream would have been. So not super fun, not super fun. For you guys so very glad we found this mod we do have one more kind of challenging mini game that we're going to need to do as part of the celestial weapons collecting it's the butterfly mini game in makalania to get um kamari's saturn sigil that one i i don't know exactly how that's going to go it is challenging it's not easy um there's like two mini games basically there's an easier one and a harder one the easier one i know i can do after just a few tries it's not a big deal um it just takes me maybe four five six tries something like that but the harder one the harder one might take some practice so i don't know how that mini game is going to go we shall see so we'll see if we get kimari's saturn sigil that's another kind of like maybe for me 
along with, of course, we've talked about Waka's Jupiter sigil because it just takes so much freaking Blitzball to get that far. <gasps> Jane! Jane, I have not seen you on stream in a few weeks. Girl, how are you doing? What have you been up to? I feel like I need I need a Jane update. I need a Jane update. Like, you're, you're back. You're in my life again. I think it's been like, I don't know, a couple of weeks since I've seen you on a stream or anything. Or a message, or had a message from you or anything like that. How are you doing? Living life and missing streams making me so sad. Oh, well, don't be sad, Jane. You're here for this one. You're here for this one. Did you do anything fun for the 4th of July? Do y'all celebrate the 4th? If you don't, you can just tell me no, Karen. It was just a regular weekend. If y'all celebrate the 4th, tell me what fun things you did. I'm curious. We had a um, we had a cookout on Saturday, and we made birria tacos on Sunday, which is a Mexican dish. Yes, we made a Mexican dish for 4th of July. I think that's very poetic and, um, and approve, you know of doing non-American things on the 4th of July. <laughs> and of course our neighbors did a lot of fireworks, so we saw that, and the dog was very scared. That was basically our fourth. That was basically our fourth. Oh, Jane, I guess it's probably been, it, you probably know the outcome at this point, but uh, send in, I, I hope that your, uh, your track team that you work with did very well at their meets. Um, I don't celebrate the 4th, but we did smoke a huge motherfucking brisket, and it was delicious. Oh my god. Oh my god, Jane. That sounds so good. Um, I, you know, when I was growing up, I used to think I didn't like brisket, because I would have it from barbecue places, and it would be so dry and gross, and I was not into it. But then, I had brisket as more as an adult at some other places that actually know how to cook it. And when you do it right, like when you smoke it right, it's like mind-blowingly delicious. It's just that it turns out most people do not know how to smoke a brisket. And they just do it wrong and dry it out and it gets nasty. Um, I'm going to make you give me your pudding recipe later, Karen. Okay, Katie, I'll have to go find the specifics of it so that I can give that to you. But basically it's like... It's like you get the vanilla pudding, you put some milk in, you put a can of sweetened condensed milk in, I think a little bit more vanilla flavoring, you mix that up and then it's kind of pudding consistency. And then you put in a whole tub of the, um, of like Cool Whip basically, or, or whip topping. And then it gets like a really fluffy pudding. That's basically the recipe. But I'll find the actual website and uh, send it to you. And I'll tell you the, the modifications you should make. Like the, the one on the website calls for way too much whip topping and way too many bananas. So I will, uh, I'll tell you what I changed about it to make it a little bit better. Thanks for the track shout out. Oh yeah, of course you're welcome. Um, Mr. Jane is great at making briskets, that's for sure. Yeah, it was a cool whip pudding. Yeah, we were talking earlier about some of the stuff that, um, that I made for 4th of July. I made the potato salad and the banana pudding, so. And the banana pudding was like, it was like the best banana. The recipe said like best banana pudding ever or something like that is what it was called. And they were not lying. It was like the best banana pudding ever. Yeah, Mr. Jane's big into into smoking, right? Um, so I'm not surprised. He probably knows how to make actually make a brisket without it being like dry and, and like nasty. But like, I mean, I'm not alone in that, right? Like, you go to like a barbecue joint, and you order brisket, and it's like the worst thing on the menu. Like, I've experienced I experienced that multiple times as like a kid and as a teenager. It wasn't until I was an adult that I had brisket at a place that it was really good. And then of course Levi learned to cook it, and his is amazing. But um, I thought for the longest time I just didn't like brisket. And then someone convinced me to try it at this other place. Um, and it was good. And I was like, oh, I guess I do like brisket when it's cooked right. You know what I mean? <laughs> but the place that I first tried brisket that I realized, like, I don't hate brisket. It's just that nobody knows how to cook it. Is a place called Outlaws Barbecue in Panama City. I think it's actually on Panama City Beach right now. They moved out to the beach. So I think they're actually on Panama City Beach. Not Panama City anymore. But... That place is amazing. If you ever are in Panama City, you need to go to Outlaws, you need to order the brisket. It it will knock your fucking socks off. <laughs> Katie, I'm in love with you, don't forget it. I ship it. <laughs> I ship it so much. <laughs> oh yeah, Jane, I redid um who all was like VIPs and, and mods and stuff on the stream. So you have mod status now, just by the way. I realized I like just did not have enough mods um, 
you know, because we have to spread it out because sometimes people can come to some streams and not others for a while, right? So I gave a whole bunch of people mod status. That's what, yeah, that's the sword, the sword fight. Yes, yeah, so that's why you have a little sword icon. Um, so you can do mod stuff now on the stream if that's ever needed. So that means if like someone comes and spams or whatever, you can ban them for me. I can now dictate my will upon the bots. Exactly. You get it. You, you understand your job, Jane. Perfect. That's what we want. <laughs> All right, five minutes left. Five minutes left, and then we can go claim our prize. Hopefully it's 200 lightning bolts at that point. And we can actually go do something else for a minute. <clears throat> do y'all hear, like, this boop, boop noise? Um, I think you probably are. If you're hearing this boop, boop noise, just know that's not part of the game. That is part of the mod that we're using to make him automatically dodge the lightning bolts get some extra bolts just in case. I might, Katie. Like, the alarm might go off and I'm just like, I can't do it yet. I have to stay a minute. I have to stay a minute. Just be sure. <clears throat> yeah, super sweet. Super sweet. If I hadn't found this, like, probably what I would have done is told you guys we're gonna do, like, an hour's worth of attempts and then if I can't get it, like, I'll probably do it off stream. You know what I mean? Or just not do it at all. Because um, I just feel like it would have been so freaking boring. And I wish, like, this minigame is ridiculous. Like, I don't understand why the developers set it up this way. Like, I understand dodging 200 lightning bolts as the, as, you know, the thing, right, to get the Venus Sigil. I think that's fine. My problem with this minigame is that it's 200 consecutive lightning bolts. That is ridiculous and, and harmful and um, probably a human rights violation. Like... I just don't get it. Like, what were the devs thinking? Why did they think this would be fun for anybody? Even if you do it, it's not fun. I can speak from experience because as a kid, I did do this. Um, it's not fun. It's not a fun mini game to do. <laughs> it is a human rights violation, Jane. You know it. You know it. So yeah, bless um bless the PC version and bless mod makers for writing a script to make this happen for us so that we don't have to suffer any longer with the lightning dodging mini game from hell. <laughs> so, since I'm not playing this on console, you know, uh, don't starve had an achievement that made you crank a machine 2,000 times, I believe. There's no purpose to it, just that you get an achievement. <laughs> oh my god, that is cruel! Poor, uh, poor achievement hunters that feel like getting all the achievements is, like, completionist for them. Cruel. Absolutely cruel. Um, you know, not into that. Not into that for, uh, for those poor people. I don't, I don't dislike dislike <laughs> it's not right for them to do that <laughs> um but yeah i mean i feel like the chocobo mini game that i modded away as well like that at least doesn't feel ridiculous on the devs part i just suck at video games you know but i do feel like that takes um you know actual skill and dedication and uh and learning and some things like that that make that uh more of a satisfying challenge to go through this though it just tests your patience that's all it's testing and i do have a lot of patience so which is why i was able to do this <laughs> at some point in time but that doesn't make it fun okay that doesn't make it fun the only game where patience as a skill is fun is animal crossing That's just how that is. That's just how that is. And patience is the main skill of Animal Crossing, and it's fun as hell. All right, one more minute, y'all. One more minute, and then we can go check and see if we got the lightning bolts. Hopefully we did. I mean, it feels like it's been at least 200, right? It feels like we've been sitting here for forever. Like, we must have dodged 200 lightning bolts by now. 
Animal Crossing patience factor made up with cuteness. Exactly, Jane. Well, because, you know, where they, the way they make you be patient in Animal Crossing is, like, the dialogue um, that the characters go through, right? And, and making you be patient and listening to some of their rambling and imprecise language, like, it makes it cuter. It does, you know? It makes it cuter. It makes you bond with them better. So, you know. I wanted to get into Animal Crossing, but I don't want to share my kids' switches or get my own. Katie, why don't you just get your own? Get yourself a light. That's what I do. I have a Switch Lite um, that I play Animal Crossing on, and uh, it's really nice. And I don't play consistently. Like, I'll play for, like, a couple months, like, hardcore, and then I'll take a break, and I'll come back and play for a couple months hardcore. Oh! It's time. Okay. I'm gonna just turn my controller back on, because in all of that, the controller fell asleep. <gasps> okay. Let's go. Your kids all suck at games. Kick them off. <gasps> Oh, that's too funny. <laughs> I'm a little nervous, too. But if this didn't work, at least I showed off the mod, and we showed that the mod worked, and I can just do it off stream, right? So you don't have to sit here and watch it. Yeah, I hope it was enough bolts. Okay, let's see. We're gonna get a bunch of treasures beforehand. Tired of being struck by lightning, feeling burnt out, then coming for a rest at the Blight Memorial Travel Agency. Uh, you'll feel refreshed in no time. Ether. Okay, we have to keep opening this chest. Even several bouts of electrocution won't keep you down for your admirable display of courage. The Blighton, Blight, I'm not saying that right. Bil Bilgen, the Bilgen Memorial Travel Agency confers upon you the Fighting Spirit Award. Thank you. Okay, another elixir. Congratulations, you've dodged five lightning bolts in a row. Okay. Congratulations, you've dodged 10 lightning bolts in a row. Congratulations, you've dodged 20 lightning bolts in a row. There's several of these gifts that we go through until we get to the 200 one. Congratulations, you've dodged 50 lightning bolts in a row. Congratulations, you've dodged 100 lightning bolts in a row. Amazing! You've dodged 150 lightning bolts in a row. Okay. Did we get the 200? We got the 200, y'all. Amazing! You've dodged 200 lightning bolts in a row. Yay! Ah, oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Katie. We getting it. Okay, Venus sigil. Okay, fabulous. We got that. All right. I'm gonna save my game before we do anything else. Okay, so we're gonna save there. Yes. Oh, we gotta turn off the mod. It's still going. Okay. Oh, and encounters are still off. All right. There we go. Now we're gonna go up here and we're gonna finish out that little side quest that I showed y'all the book on earlier. We actually started this. If y'all remember, we went and prayed at these cactuar statues before. Ooh, two larvae. And um, we need to pray at three of them for this next little quest that we're doing. And um, oh, I don't know what's going on. Okay. Just attack them. Boom. Something's up with my notes document. I don't know what's happening. It wasn't letting me mark off that I got two larvas. Hmm. The script is still running somehow. Yes, it is. Okay. Let's page down, maybe? Mm, this is going to be problematic. The script is causing some kind of problem. Um, it's still, like, running. Okay. <laughs> I'm just trying to get to the statue. Okay, so we already did two. We already prayed at two of these statues, and we were in the Thunder Plains the first time. So we have to pray at one more of these statues to trigger the ghost cactus. 
So it cycles around glowing at all the statues in this area. So we're just going to wait for this one to glow too. And we're going to press X and pray. Whoa. Okay, that's the final of the three. You'll hear that little cactuar noise that just happened. Okay, we're going to go back down to the southern part again. Okay. I mean, something is still really strange with my notes. I don't know what's happening. I'm so sorry, guys. So this is an iron giant and two boars. Let's give you a little bit of magic. Oh, half. This is going to be a problem if I can't mark off my progress. See ya. Yeah. Okay, let me pause that. <laughs> okay, I don't... I don't really understand what's happening here. And now I just accidentally erased my whole document. That's wonderful. <gasps> oh no! I'm so sorry, guys. Hang on just a moment. I definitely need my notes. <laughs> Let me see if I can restore. I just undo it a bunch of times. Oh my word. Yeah, somehow that script like totally jacked up my controls, like my mouse and everything. I don't understand. Um, hang on one second, y'all. Let's go back and save the game and close it so that I can delete this script from my computer. And that should fix that situation. Well, that's two more larvas. I'm going to totally have lost count of a bunch of stuff that I'm doing with those. Now it's just going to have to be what it is. Okay. Let's go save. Let's go down here. Mm, yeah, that's where I want to save. Okay. Um, okay, let's close the game. And hopefully that will let me just delete this script from the computer completely. Okay, so the script is gone. Now I'm going to try to restore my notes. Oh, something is still jacked up. What's going on? Okay, no. That does seem to have helped. All right. A few more minutes, y'all. Oh, where's the restore? Okay, here we go, version history. There we go. Restore this version. Okay. <laughs> oh, something's still wrong. I don't know what's happening. Let's try reopening this. Oh, 
Yeah, something's still super wrong. I have no idea what's happening, y'all, and why I cannot click my mouse properly. Let me see if it's, like, lost charge or something, but I don't think so. Like, that script totally jacked up my computer. And I don't know how it did it. <gasps> I'm sorry. Um, I guess I just will have to go count afterwards, after the stream, um, if I did enough of the monster catching or if I missed something. Uh-oh, now the game won't open. Oh, this is just fabulous. Because so I had closed the game and now it won't open because of what's ever, whatever's going on that's stuck. Oh wait, there it goes. Okay, it's opening. Okay. We're just going to close my notes so that I don't destroy them more. <laughs> and uh, let's get the game going back again. I'll just open my notes up on my phone. All right. Oh my god, I can't change scenes because of whatever's happening. Oh no! I can't change back to the game in slobs. I don't understand. It's like my mouse literally won't click and I don't know why. There we go. Holy crap. Okay. No more touching anything. We're just going to play the game. And then I guess I'll just reboot my computer after stream. Okay, so anyway, we're going back south. And we're going to see a ghost cactuar come out around this area, somewhere around here. Oh, here's some more cactuars. Okay. We definitely need to capture some of these guys, so let's see how many we can get. Can we get all three? Oh, here's what I'm going to do. I want to see if I can steal. Bring it on. Yes! Chocobo feathers are awesome! Okay, Titus, come back out here. And capture it. Oh, and he missed. That's okay, we stole a Chocobo feather. <laughs> Alright. Let me see if I can still do my notes from here. Kinda, sorta, very slowly. We did get an iron giant that I didn't get to mark off. We got two more larvas. Okay, that'll just have to do. All right, the ghost cactuar will come around somewhere around here. There's like a broken, there's a broken one. Alright, so this is a larva. And what are these guys? Arrogay. Okay. So there's a larva. And two of these Arrogays. Okay. Okay, this is working. We're making it happen. Gosh, Titus. You would miss... care about you anymore, lightning. Alright, the broken one is somewhere... Ah, here we go! There's the ghost cactuar. So we basically have to follow him. Uh, let's do... Alright, got another. Got 
two steel. And then he runs away. Huh. <laughs> well, anyway, we got two of them, so that's good. You pray to them and also murder them. Yes, exactly. You get it. Oh, it's up here. Okay, I'm following you. One thousand needles. So rude. But these chocobo feathers are great. All right, so we got one, and we got two. He's leading me in here for some reason? Why are you leading me in there? I don't think this is the right way to go. This doesn't feel right. Wow, rude missing. So that's one of this group. Aw, ran away. Oh, both of them ran away. It's rude. Oh, we only need to capture three more of those guys. Okay. Is the broken tower down here? Mm, this is a... A gold element, a boar, and an aroge. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right, so I'm I'm doing it okay, marking it off on my phone. That's working all right. Oh, there it is. It's this one. Oh my gosh, lightning. Get off me, I already conquered you. Nope, there's another group. With the gold element. The boo and the aroge. Alright. Mark those off. Electro marble. Oh, kitten. Y'all see that back there. Little lady playing with the ears. They love the sparklies. Okay, so this is where he leads me, and then you pray finally here, and we will get a prize. What's in the box? What's in the box? The celestial mirror seems to react. Yes, let's use it. So lightning-y. Got the spirit lance. Okay, so that's Kimari's celestial weapon. We still, of course, have to get um, his sigil to complete that. But at least we got the weapon to put it on. Alright, so this is a Melusinine. And then we've got 
a gold element and a booer. I won and have returned. Catch me up. Whoa, Monsters, Inc. <laughs> um, so basically, we just got Kimari's Spirit Lance by praying to some cactuars and then following the cactuar ghost. And it led us to Kimari's Celestial Weapon. So we've got that now. We still have to upgrade it, of course, so that it's actually useful. But at least we got it. And now we're just going to be doing some um, monster catching in the Thunder Plains. So this is a larva... And then a gold element. Yeah, Jane, were you here for the um, stream where we explained the monster capturing mini game that we've been doing over the past several streams? Or is this new information for you? I haven't. Okay. So basically, there is a side quest in this game, and the side quest is to capture 10 of every monster. So part of what we're doing over these several streams when we collect um, the different, like, celestial weapons, which is basically like the ultimate weapons in this game, is um, we are capturing all of these monsters. So that's why I'm still killing these things, even though they're, like, super low level and they don't really do anything like for me. <laughs> what the fork is that golden thing? That is a gold element. It's uh, one of it's an electric um, elemental thing, basically. All right, got another gold element. Let's do a mug on this guy. And this one is a boar. All right. <clears throat> okay, so we want to do this up here in this area because that's the only way we're going to get the iron giants and we still got to get 10 of those, of course. Now, when you're on this part of the... Th oh, I'll tell you in a second. I didn't realize I was going to get a fight. <laughs> Alright, this should be the last golden element that we need. Alright. It's this guy. I cannot pronounce that to save my life, but we captured one now. Karisk, maybe? Kusarik? Kusarik, maybe? That's how you say that? I'm not sure. Now this guy right here that you see off to the side, when you're in this part, do not talk to him. Don't do it. Don't try to talk to him. It is pointless and silly. He uh, will summon dark uh, Ixion. So you'll remember when we tried to go to Besaid, and um, we couldn't go to Besaid because uh, there was Dark Valifor there waiting for us, and I cannot kill the Dark Aeons. Uh, so that guy right there, if you talk to him, he will summon Dark Ixion, which is the little, the horse guy. Right, so that's the, the horse, the electric horse Aeon. And um, I definitely can't kill that thing. So, <laughs> we don't want to summon it. So we're just going to walk around him. We're not going to talk to him or acknowledge his existence. Just let him chill and do his own thing. And leave us the fuck alone. <laughs> Alright, so I think this is the last of the gold elements. Yep. Alright, let's get the boar. Okay, that was the last of those. Let's see. Definitely need more of these guys. What are you attacking over there, lady? Oh, yeah. Lady's attacking the window hardcore.
Do y'all remember here? We stood under that little that little thing earlier in the game and rested for a minute. Who? Oh, yeah. Right, and this is an arrow bay. I'm good, yeah. Sure, Waka, you're good. All right, I think let's run around this save point right here and do it that way. I think out of this group, the only one that we need, yeah, is this lizard guy. Yeah. You like that? So for, as far as the getting the celestial weapons, which is part of what we're doing, um, part of the importance of getting, doing the monster capturing is because you have to unlock a certain amount of stuff in that monster arena for um, Orin's uh, stuff for his celestial weapon. So we definitely want to do as much of this as we can. Oh, great. Take out those guys, although we don't need them anymore. Remember when we first were here and we fought those iron giants? And they were very annoying and actually gave us some trouble. <laughs> Not anymore. They really, it's really hard for them to kill us now. We still do have to take several hits to kill them. But, uh, but they can't really kill us too easily. It's pretty difficult for them. Even though he does the little blocky block, which okay. is annoying. Next and makes scene. it so that a lot of the characters cannot harm him very well. Still. Alright, that's another one of those that we needed. Oh, yeah. That's another one of those that we needed. Take that. Okay. We've almost got enough of those um, Aroge things. I guess I should have done that whole run the script and do the lightning bolts at the end. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea that the script was going to, like, jack up stuff on my computer, you know what I mean? <laughs> Just didn't even occur to me that that was a possibility. Yeah. It was going to, like, literally make things not right. But, I mean, it's a script. It's just, it's just running on the computer doing its own thing. Of course it would cause problems. So, yeah, hot tip. If you use that script to cheat at the Lightning Bolt minigame like I did... After you're done, save the game and just reboot your computer. Because, I mean, I hit all the buttons to terminate the script. I even deleted it off of my computer, and I've still got some um, very strange things that are happening. <laughs> so, yeah. And I don't really know enough about this type of stuff to tell you exactly what that script did, other than it worked. <laughs> it worked, and I was able to beat the minigame. You did! I put um, Water Strike on his sword. So he's got, he, he has uh, water. You can see there's uh, fire coming out of Waka's ball. He's got Fire Strike. Oh gosh, someone actually killed Waka. Bring him back to life, Yuna. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, because the way that you do the capture minigame, Jane, is you have to use special weapons that have the capture ability on them. Um, but because you have to use the weapons, that means you kind of can't use your elemental magic, and certain monsters in this game are very hard to kill with just weapons. So, what I do instead, of course, is, uh, is put some elemental stuff on their weapons. Y'all stop missing. 
There we go. Got one. I know y'all are faster than this. Stop it. There we go. Come on, get the last one. Yes, now we got all the cactars we need. Captured ten of those guys. Those are a little bit rare to spawn sometimes, but I guess because we just did the prayer thing, there's lots of them spawning and it's fine. Okay, we have enough of those, most of those. Oh no, we still need more of the big lizards. Hiya! So yeah, because Titus has the water strike on there, he's going to do more damage to the elemental, the gold element. Whereas normally weapons wouldn't do very much damage to it. We rock! We rock! Let's save. Oh, Iron Giant by itself. Hell yeah. I want more spawns like that. Good job dodging, Titus. Alright, so we need four more Iron Giants. We also need some Larvas. Might have to go back down to the south area for more Larvas. I thought that more spawned up here, but they don't seem to be doing that. Yeah. Whoop whoop! That's right, Katie. Can y'all tell? Can y'all tell that the cats are like totally destroying everything back there? <gasps> oh, they're being so crazy. They love to eat cords, lights, you know, it's their favorite snack. Ambushed. All right, unleash your pitiful attacks upon me. It will make no difference in the long run. needed more of those. Easy. Yeah, sure, Riku, it's easy. It's easy because we're way over leveled for this area. We're literally just here doing the capture quest. <laughs> so easy for you to say easy. Yay, another iron giant. All right. Always steal from these guys. You want those light curtains, just like you should always steal from the cactars because you want those chocobo feathers. Good items to get. Alright. We're gonna save because that will heal up Riku real quick and her HP actually got a little bit low there. Lightning. Oh, good, another Uroge. We need that. All right. Needed one of those, too. I think we actually need one of all of these. Yep. There we go. Booyah. Piece of cake. Oh, this group again. No problem. no 
All right, we only need a few more of the muscalines and one more of the Aruge and one more of the Ku Kusarik? Yeah, Kusarik. Like nothing, exactly. Poor monsters, you're just murderizing them. Only 10 of each one, and you know what? They're not getting murdered, they're getting captured. So they're going to a very nice place to live out the rest of their days. <laughs> <laughs> Which is definitely better than being murdered. It's not better than being murdered. But um, that's what we're going to tell ourselves. <laughs> uh, so basically what's happening is they are, they're this, uh, yeah exactly, they're going to a monster zoo where this guy will use them for experiments to create bigger and better monsters uh, that you can fight later as all optional bosses. Woohoo! Alright, that's all of those that we needed. And that's all of these guys that we needed too. And we need one more of the little lizards. I'm good, yeah? Then we just need larva and iron giants. Which the iron giants are the rarer spawn. I feel like, I guess larva are a little bit of a rarer spawn too. I'm not sure, but I haven't really seen them as we've been running around. No problem! No problem. That's right. But you'll see, Jane, if we don't need them, we won't get them. Like, if I don't need any of the monsters in a group, we'll just run away. We don't capture what we don't need to capture. Rude. Getting first strike like that. Kia! Alright, we should only need one more Iron Giant. And then we'll just have to find a couple more Larva and one more of the little, little lizard guys. And then we should have everything. Oh, there's two more larvae. They get to become super monsters <laughs> with a tragic backstory. They're one nice monster away from enemies to lovers monster trope. <laughs> you know, it gets even better when every monster in this game already has... Oh, I apparently have enough larvas. Okay. The, every monster in this game already has a tragic backstory. As you guys know, we learned very early on that the monsters are called fiends, and fiends are basically dead people that don't get properly sent to the far plane, and so they get um, attached to this world and just um, live out their days as fiends attacking travelers. So they're already tortured souls. Every single monster that we come across is a ghost already. So, you know, I'm giving them new glorious purpose, as Loki would say. Did y'all watch the newest episode of Loki, by the way? Oh my god. Oh my god, it's so good, y'all. It's so good. I love that show. I stand Gator Loki um, forever and ever. Amen. Um, you know, he bit the president's hand. I think that's wonderful. Oh, Jane, you watched it? Oh, that's so good. Yeah, I love <laughs> Crokey TikTok. Yeah. Oh my god, there's some amazing fan cams of Crokey out there, is there not? I want a Gator Loki shirt. I saw somebody that had a Gator Loki plushie, so I think this is what they actually did. I think they had a Gator plushie already, and they put like a Loki hat on the Gator plushie. Like, I think that's what they actually did. But um, but I loved it. I had to retweet it. I was like, I, I need this in my life. So if anyone can get me a Gator Loki plushie, I would love to have that. <laughs> yeah, I did. Somebody, uh, I, was it Katie? Was it you that asked for it? Somebody asked for a Loki emoji. So I put a Gator Loki emoji on the server. So now we can all hail Gator Loki whenever we need to. Oh, there's our last Iron Giant, I think. I think we only need one more of him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We only need one more. And then we'll just need one more Muse line. And then we'll have everything in this area. Yeah. 
here. Where? It's in the cafe. It's in the cafe, Jane. You can use it anytime you want in there. Rude, actually killing Titus. Yes, yes, in the cafe. <clears throat> Booyah. Okay, we just need to find a uh, melusine. And then we can be done. I feel like I saw some saw more of those when I was like down here a bit farther. You guys are toast. So easy on you next time. Toast. Tasty toast. I just want to know that Gator, Flor Gator Loki is from Florida. Of course Gator Loki is from Florida. Where else would he be from? I mean, I guess he could be from anywhere that's um, kind of in the swampy southeast U.S. We definitely have a lot of gators right here, back. even though this isn't Florida. But, um, I don't know. In my mind, he was definitely from Florida. So... Uh, nobody told me that. I just, you know, I just knew it in my heart. Oh, more cactars. Well, let's actually try to steal from them instead of just run. Because we can get some chocobo feathers. No, not mug. Steal. There we go. Orin's definitely going to miss. Yeah, I knew it. <laughs> 1,000 needles. Well, we got the chocobo feathers anyway, so that's good. I'm on a roll. Okay. Come here, Melu Sign. You're the last one I need. I thought for sure it would be an iron giant, but no. I need one of the little lizards. Oh my gosh. I'm done with you guys. I'm not trying to capture more of you. Come to me, lizards. You're the last one I need. Not you. Did y'all know that Tom Hiddleston, this is a fun a fun Loki fact, but Tom Hiddleston apparently voiced um, Captain Hook in a, one of the Tinkerbell straight to you know, DVD or whatever movies. So it was kind of a little bit referential to that that uh, that Crokey bit off President Loki's hand. <laughs> Just like Captain Hook. I thought that was fun when I learned that. This is not what I need. Live and let live, live, and let live exactly. I'm not trying to kill what I don't need. I just want to get the one more little lizard, and then I will leave this place. And you guys will not have to have me be here back again. I will leave you alone. Maybe let's try going back to the southern area below the um, travel agency. You're doing so good by Loki. I'm a happy Marvel fan. Yeah! Um, I was... I mean, I know, like... Loki is a very, uh, Tumblr popular <laughs> MCU character. Um, I have to admit he was never one of my big favorites. I mean, I respected how into him a lot of people were, but he was okay. You know what I mean? Um, but this show, I have totally changed my mind. Like, I am all aboard the Loki train. Loki love. Um, he's the best. Uh, more Loki, please. I am so sad that he's, like, you know... I don't know if he's going to get any more content after this show. I mean, people see how popular he is. Maybe Disney will give us some more Loki content, but who knows? I don't have high hopes for that, but um, I absolutely am loving this show. It's one of the best MCU pieces of content I think they've ever put out is basically this show, for sure. Going to watch Black Widow this weekend because women for women aside from wanting to watch it. I'm sure I'll end up watching that too. Ah, oh, there we go. Last one that we need. There we go, got him. Booyah. Booyah. 
Booyah. Okay, so we captured all of the monsters that we were needing to capture in the Thunder Plains. We can go somewhere else now for the last little bit of the stream. I'll be right back. Yeah, let's run. <laughs> all right. save all right and let's board the airship the final showdown all right let's head over to Luca Here we go. maybe we'll go up the Meehan high road a little bit where does this drop me off oh it drops me off there okay so let's head this way I don't think, I think I still had need to get attack reels to do, um, to get Waka's world champion there from the cafe. Which we still have not unlocked because I can't seem to get paired up against anything but like amazing blitzball teams and then I lose. <laughs> All right. I see a large shadow in the sky sometimes. It's too big to be a bird. What could it be? I know, I know, I know. It's sin. It's sin, y'all. Fiends are lurking everywhere. I have to be on my toes constantly. And if it's not sin, she's seeing the airship. All right. So we got some Meehan monsters from some of the other stuff that we've done, but there's a lot that we haven't. So we still need... We definitely need Meehan fangs. And we definitely need some floating eyes. Although we got a lot of floating eyes when we were doing the Mushroom Rock Road. And what's this guy's called? Raldo. Okay, we definitely need some of him too. And we need the white elements from here. And we need to steal from those as well so we can get the ice um, strike on Kimari's weapon. Oh, I just wanted to talk to that guy. All right. It's another Raldo. And another floating eye. And let's bring Riku in so we can steal from that. Yeah! yeah! Told ya! This is a statue of Lord Meehan, who founded the Crusader several hundred years ago. Lord Meehan passed along this very road on his way to St. Bevel. Ever since then, the road has been known as Meehan High Road. They really need to guard the High Road better. The Crusaders, the warrior monks, I don't care who handles it as long as it's safe. another Meehan Fang. That should be enough floating eyes right there. And there's another Raldo. Booyah! Booyah. I'm good, yeah? Sure, Waka. You're good. There are seven legends about Lord Meehan's statue, but they're all so absurd. <gasps> oh my gosh, tell us how you really feel, dude. Oh, uh, we don't need any of these. We got plenty of bombs previously. After you beat Sin, there's not nearly as many people chilling on the Meehan High Road. There's just some. 
All right, that's another one of those guys and another white elementally. We have plenty of floating eyes. Let's see if we can hit it. No CV yeah. Scully, I don't want to become famous. Sorry. <laughs> oh, silly bots. I don't know what they think they're trying to accomplish. I wonder if people actually click those links, like if streamers see those and they're like, yes, I do. Let me click this link. It's obviously not suspicious and will help my stream. I fled Bevel and came here. I got sick of living there. It was so unsettling what the priests meddling with the warrior monk's arrogance. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Big mood, lady. Big mood. I hear exactly what you're saying. Okay, don't need these guys. Let's flee. We caught plenty of them when we were on the uh, Mushroom Rock Road. Here's the kid's ball that I kicked. I'm not playing. I'm practicing with my brother. He doesn't even remember I kicked his ball. Okay. Definitely need him. And another Meehan Fang. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh, my headphones are like battery low, battery low. I know. Stream's almost over. Calm down. Unplug you in. It's okay. That's this side. This is the right side. Okay. There we go. Thanks, Katie, <clears throat> for grabbing that bot. My sister wanted to play, so we came here. I just didn't expect to see so many fiends. Oh, that little kid's a girl. I didn't even realize that. I always thought it was a little boy. Guess it's a little girl. Well, I kicked a little girl's ball. <laughs> stabby, stabby. Exactly. Good job stabbing. Okay, we do need some of these guys, for sure. We need all of these guys. Kia! When you first go on Meehan High Road, I feel like it takes forever. It's like the, these all three screens, they take like forever to get through. Um, but now that I can kill everything so fast, I'm already on the third screen. <laughs> all right, got one of those and one of those. don't really need any more floating eyes, but I guess I'll get you too, since I was here for the others. What you got to say, lady? You look awful depressed, and it's such a beautiful day. I'm not depressed, lady. We're gonna go beat Sin. I am happy. I'm doing good. Ecstatic, even. Woohoo! Oh, yeah. it's, it's over. I'm on a roll. <clears throat> All right, maybe we can finish up some of the Meehan fiends. I don't know because I still got to go get an orange sphere from the other part of Meehan High Road. So I don't know about that. Do and a Meehan Fang. All right. Do 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 do. Sorry, I don't feel like talking anymore. Oh, okay. Sure, you don't have to talk to me. It's not required. The collapse of the Crusaders. The conflict in Bavel. I fear for Spira's future. Don't fear! We're gonna bring the eternal calm. 
it'll be all good. Because we're the main characters, so rest assured. There are more and more Albed coming here. I don't know if that's good or bad. Why would that be bad? Be racist against Albed? Waka was, but he learned how to do better. You can learn too, random NPC lady. Mm, no, let's steal one more of this. Get that raw dough. Okay, we're almost done with the Meehan Fiends. Just need two more Meehan Fangs and two more White Elementals. Doo -doo -doo. We got off the ship with the children under the orders of Elder Sid. The Elder probably senses it will be a tough battle. Oh, interesting. A fiend tried to attack us, but mom blew it away with Machina. Good job, mom. Don't make her angry. You don't want to see her when she's angry. <gasps> oh, that's the chocobo lady. Is there anybody over here? Yeah. The children are so happy. Everything is so new to them. Remember we saw these guys when we were over there on that little raft thingy, the, those old ruins. That is the biggest puddle I've ever seen. Kid, that's not, the, that's not a puddle. That's not a puddle. That's the ocean. <sighs> okay. So we do need to go get a Sphere for Orin on that other part of Meehan High Road. So we're actually going to go ahead and save here. Well, let's talk to these guys. What they got to say? I told him I could fight, but they said to get off the ship. Sid has become quite the fox threatening me like an old man. <gasps> That's funny. I'm sure we'll see our fellow crusaders if we wait here. We can't depend on the temple, so I guess it's all on us. Well, that's a good point. All right, let's save here. In Meehan High Road, where we started. Okay. Um, so next time we are streaming, it will not be Final Fantasy X, right? Okay, let's go ahead and we can close Final Fantasy. Okay, so next episode of our... No, shush. Okay, next episode of Artistic License. Um, we will be streaming uh, Bez's new game, which is Eye Cleaner, Eyewear Cleaner 2077. So I'll be doing a first impressions of that game, the first two hours of it. And then um, next episode of Interstage Window, that's on Saturday, is a Stardew Valley Community Day. And oh my gosh, thank you so much, Anonymous Gifter. Uh, Jane, you have a tier one sub now. I appreciate it very, very much. Thank you. Um, so if you guys are interested in joining the Community Day that we're going to be doing on Saturday, that is Stardew Valley. If you want to play that with me, then you need to get into my Discord server right there. Discord, join that, get the farmer role that has all your instructions. So if you're there on Saturday, you can play Stardew with us. We're doing a co-op farm. And, uh, and like I said, the next artistic license, so the next Thursday stream is going to be Eyewear Cleaner 20, 2077 First Impressions. Um, and use the Cater Loki. That's right. That's right, Jane. Use the Cater Loki. All right. There's all my socials. Y'all know how it works. I do content creation just like everybody else, and it works the same way as everybody else. So uh, you are welcome to follow me in all of those places, Patreon, um, Twitter, YouTube. You guys get it. You guys get it. Okay. Let's raid. It looks like our friend Pugzoomies is on. Let's make sure they're, they're not on a break. Or anything like that. Okay, so it looks like Pugzumi is playing Persona 5 Royal. Uh, that is a game that I would love to at some point play. I've watched my husband play it. It's a really good story. Really cool role play game. So y'all should like it if you like Final Fantasy X. Yes, it is a great name. All right, it looks like they're not on a break or anything. Uh, oh, they're actually singing. Oh, fun. Okay, guys, y'all have fun with that. I will see you guys on Saturday or next Thursday, whichever. And uh, don't forget to make it a great day.
Thank you, Mochi, for the sub, even though the raid already left. Love you. Mwah.